Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to be configuring ICE to integrate to Active Directory and then show how to add security groups and kind of how it all ties together. So to start, uh, we have the ICE instance that I've had built for this lab, uh, which is lab-ice, and uh, I have my Active Directory server here. So one of the things that ICE does when you integrate with Active Directory is it creates a machine account in AD. What this allows for is for the ICE server to authenticate users, just like a computer would when you log in. Uh, it also allows for like password changes. So any any rules, any uh, you know computer privileges that need to be set um, for a normal computer would also need to be allowed for the ICE instance. So when dealing with like uh, you know any server administrators, they want to lock down a lot of this stuff as much as possible. They just need to make sure that the privileges are the same as any other device. So like here's another ICE server um, where it's created a machine account. Now to do so though, uh, first thing we do is to go into the ICE portal and then we'll go down to external identity sources. Here you can see we have a couple different uh, areas like LDAP, ODBC, RADIUS, tokens, RSA secure ID, and SAML ID providers. So we'll go to Active Directory and we're going to click Add. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the maximum clock skew that's, al that's allowed between the ICE server and the Active Directory environment is about five minutes. So at most you want to make sure that, for instance, ICE has uh, the correct time. One way to do that, though, is we can SSH to the ICE server. So we can go to SSH and enter. Oh, nice. Let's just go ahead and start this over. SSH to the server, and then once in, we can run a show clock and, for instance, verify the time matches. So it's 236, 236, perfect. So once that's done, let's go ahead and create a join point name. So uh, you can call this pretty much anything you'd like. I would highly recommend naming it something like, uh, you know, the AD environment. Like for instance, we'll use Almet, and the Active Directory and domain is almet.us, and click Submit. Once, once this is done, um, it's asked if you would like to join all ICE nodes. So if you have multiple nodes and multiple ICE servers, they would each show up under here. So what we're going to do is click Yes, and then AD username. Now, if you highlight this little I here, should come up with the information. So typically you want to use like UPN of the user account or just the username. And this username, I typically recommend just saying it needs to be a domain admin just for ease of use. It's not used one, again once you've uh, put this in. Uh, it's only used during the initial join process. So we'll put in the, let's see, put in the password. One thing you can do as well, if you'd like, you could tell it what OU you'd like the computer account to be in. Um, it can be moved after the computer account has been added. Um, but if like you have a um, systems administrator that wants it in a specific OU, you can clarify that here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And we can watch it go through it. And now it's complete. So now we've added ICE to AD. So what does that actually look like in Active Directory? So we pull up our Active Directory environment. Let's open up the Computers tab here, and let's click Refresh. Notice now we have a lab-ice account. Let's go to Properties. So pretty much what you can see here is it is showing itself as a Cisco Identity Services Engine in the version. The member is just domain computers, and then you know most of this stuff is um, just all straightforward, but does give the DNS name and all that. But really all it is is a computer account. Once that's complete, however, uh, we do have to actually add the security groups that we want to use for authentication. So you can see we have a couple different tabs up top here. We can show connection, how it's operational, uh, authenticated domains, groups. We can even add extra attributes we can pull from AD. But let's go to groups and click add. You can add groups and you can specify them manually or you can do what's easier and select groups from directory. So we can 
usually, unless they have a ton of security groups, you can just leave this as a start out here. However, it only shows, I think, the first hundred. So if you're looking for a specific group, you could put in like users and click retrieve groups. And it will look for anything ending with users. So for instance, I want to add domain users. Um, but truthfully, I actually want to add a couple of different accounts. So let's just look at domain. And then star. And so we really want to use domain users and domain computers because we want to be able to authenticate uh, any domain user and any domain computer that has a certificate or is using MS Chap authentication. So once we click OK, we've now added them to the list here. Now, always remember to click Save after adding your security groups. Um, but anyway, what this does here is it now gives us the ability to specify what uh, domain user uh, or do, to use domain computer under the authorization policy rules. Now, if you look here for attributes, we can also select attributes from directory. So if you wanted, uh, wait, you could type in a type in a user and retrieve any of the attributes they have. So for instance, if um, they had an attribute that was like, you know, network user or something that they've added in a, um, you know, outside of Active Directory's typical uh, information, you can pull it from here and then be able to add in here, um, you know, another attribute that you want to filter on for those user accounts. Typically, you don't use it very often. Uh, I've seen it used in a couple different scenarios where they had like network access permissions where they're like, uh, you know, we have every user that's allowed on the network uses this attribute. And in that case, you'd want to make sure you import that attribute into ICE. OK, so groups are here. Now, one more thing to show is that under authorization, we can now come in and we can specify, for instance, a, uh, a rule that we can call this like permit AD. And we can create a new condition and select attribute being, now we see Alnet here. So whatever we named the domain information um, previously will be the actual dictionary entry here. So we can go Alnet and external group, and we can say equals, and this is where we have domain computers or domain users. So if I wanted to permit AD and I wanted to permit either or, we could add another one, say or, and we could go back in to Alnet, external groups, and we could do domain computers as well. Probably wouldn't do this in a normal rule, but this kind of just shows um, you know, a quick, quick uh, little overview of uh, the authorization rules. So anyway, uh, that is really it. It is usually pretty easy. Now you do have multiple nodes, it will create a computer account per node. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, however, uh, that's pretty much it.